なんで誰も分かってくれないんだろうなニナ Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down the most despicable antagonists in anime. Number 10, Seryu Ubiquitous, Akimega Kill. The only thing worse than a bloodthirsty radical is one with guns for hands, and that's just one of her upgrades. Using her endless assortment of bodily enhancements, Seryu set out to exterminate anyone she deemed evil, aka anyone who doesn't immediately bend to her warped view of justice. That put the Night Raid in her line of fire, and unfortunately, she does quite the number on their ranks. Still, she isn't satisfied. Even when the Night Raid puts her down for good, Seryu decides to go out with an actual bang. You gotta give Seryu credits for one thing she was heartless until the very end. Number 9 Rachel, Tower of God. In a world where friends are hard to come by, Bam always had Rachel. He helped her climb the tower, protected her from monsters, and even nursed her back to health when she lost feeling in her legs. So, after all that, how did Rachel repay him? By shoving him down to his doom. That's how. Not only did she betray her one friend, but she had the gall to laugh about it after the fact, too. Even if she is being manipulated, there's simply no way to forgive Rachel for what she's done. After all, Bam's injuries may heal, but his heartbreak is here to stay. Number 8 Akainu One Piece. To this admiral, absolute justice looks a lot like absolute power, and you know what they say about that. Akainu was corrupted long before he ever met Luffy in the Straw Hats, and these days, no one is safe from his wrath. Not Whitebeard, not Luffy, and not even a boat of innocent refugees. <laughs> And yet, beyond all that, Akainu's biggest sin is that he was the one that killed Ace. By murdering the person Luffy sacrificed everything to save, Akainu went from an evil villain to an outright irredeemable one. Whitebeard evens the score with a furious punch to the face, but somehow Akainu deserved much, much worse. Number 7, Mahito, Jujutsu Kaisen. Cursed spirits aren't exactly known for their friendliness, but this special grade takes it to a whole other level. See, Mahito doesn't just kill people, he does it with a smile. As if plotting the downfall of humanity isn't bad enough on its own, it feels extra malicious coming from that same sadistic smirk. <laughs> To make matters worse, Mahito's method leans toward the cruel and unusual. With one look at what he did to the downtrodden Junpei, it's very obvious how little Mahito cares about human life. Itadori had the right idea. Someone like Mahito doesn't just need to be defeated, they need to be killed. Number 6 Freezer Dragon Ball Franchise. Most villains don't spend their pastime blowing up planets. Then again, Lord Freezer isn't most villains. He enslaved the Saiyans, blew up their world, and made them do the same to other races in the galaxy. And that was before the series even started. <laughs> When Goku and the others caught up to him on Namek, he introduced himself by blasting most of them to pieces. First Vegeta, then Krillin, and then the entirety of the planet. Up goes the Weezer! <laughs> Frieza's selfishness knows no bounds, and neither does his lust for vengeance. In fact, if there's one thing this space tyrant has taught us, it's that, even in death, Frieza knows how to hold a grudge. 
you can all go to hell without me! What? Number 5. Griffith. Berserk. This is impossible. It's not him. I can't believe this is Griffith. Some leader this guy is. When Griffith was captured by enemies, Guts and his team gave it their all to get him back. And in return, he led them all to slaughter. At the behest of the Apostles, Griffith branded the entire band of the Hawk as blood sacrifices. I submit. Then he sat back and watched as his former allies were all eaten alive in front of him. Although being devoured by monsters might be getting off easy compared to the unspeakable things Griffith did to Gaska, especially since he makes Guts watch. His pain screams say it all, former friend or not, there's no coming back from this. Griffith. Number 4. Oberon. Sora Online. In Alfheim Online, he's the fairy king. In the real world, he's a businessman. But in both, Oberon is a grade A creep. Without getting into the specifics, let's just say he subjects Asuna to behavior so reprehensible it earns him a one way trip behind bars. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic as always though, Oberon doesn't go down without a fit. After Kirito saves Asuna in the game, Oberon tries to get revenge IRL, and it goes about as well as you'd expect. <laughs> If there's a light at the end of this very, very dark tunnel, it's the look on Oberon's face when he realizes he's finally gonna pay for everything he's done. Number 3. Danzo Shimura, Naruto Shippuden. The Hidden Leaf Village is tainted with generations of pain, hate, and violence. Most of them lead back to one person, Danzo. Back in the day, it was his manipulation that forced Itachi to slaughter his clan. From there, Danzo tried to kill, cheat, and mind control his way to the very top of the shinobi world. <laughs> He claims it's all for the good of his village, but it's obvious from here that Konoha would have been much better off without him. The Uchiha certainly would have. Considering what he did to their clan, it's only fitting that Sasuke got the honor of putting Danzo in his place. Number 2. Princess Multi Melromark The Rising of the Shield Hero. Don't be fooled by her bubbly exterior, as now Fumi learned the hard way, mine is all sour, no sweet. Forget about her lavish spending or two-faced personality, she went as far as to accuse Naofumi of extremely indecent behavior, and for no other reason than to steal his belongings. <laughs> Keep in mind, she's a princess. She doesn't need his money, she just wants to watch him suffer. At the very least, Multi gets exactly what she deserves, that being a new name, courtesy of Naofumi himself. She doesn't love the ring of it though, and immediately turns around and tries to poison everyone. Some people just never learn. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Shou Taka, Full Metal Alchemist. There's not a redemption arc in all of fiction capable of rehabilitating someone like Shou Taka. He was a horrible man, a horrible scientist, and above all, a horrible father. Despite the threat of the law, Shou conducted grossly inhumane transfiguration experiments using unwilling participants, including his oblivious daughter, Nina. Nina, 
She was a sweet, innocent girl whose only crime was trusting her own father. Knowing the suffering she endured in the name of show's so-called science is almost too much to stomach. In the end, the only solace is that, thanks to Scar, this sick man can never hurt anyone ever again. <laughs> Which of these villains most deserved a punch to the face? Let us know in those comments below. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.